I never thought it, it'd get to this. I never thought it, it would, it would like kind of flip on me like that. You know what I mean? Like, um, it's so funny because I never thought the comments would get to what they're at now. Let's just go through my comment section. You know, everybody's just making fun of me. I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. I should have sold. Um, you know, just mean comments, just jerk comments, just uh, a lot of hate that I'm getting right now. YouTube's all I got left. Here we go again. We're back. <laughs> Hopefully we can do it better this time around. It's that time again. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's at 15 cents. <laughs> oh my goodness, look I'm, at that. I'm, half, I'm halfway to my last all time high. So I think people are asking for a for a video update, so I think we gotta do that. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Okay. So what you're about to watch is an interview between me and the Dogecoin millionaire through the context of him giving me a tour of his house and giving me an update about what he's been up to and sharing with me his investment plans for the next cycle of crypto. I just want you to know that I, I tried. I tried so hard. Yeah. Welcome friends to my humble abode. This is the house fully furnished. We got a pool table for the guests. Noise. Um, TV here for sports that I don't watch. Um, <laughs> light over there. This is a little setup right here. This is my roommate, uh, David. What's up, David? What's up? How y'all doing? He has a show where he raps the news. The Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Usher was a need to see. Not just for the show, but his behavior with Alicia Keys. Um, kitchen slash living room. <laughs> that bed though, <laughs> man, it's like takes up the entire living room. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, kitchen over here. Uh, I got this table from Ikea. Uh, pantry's a mess. Well, this, everything's kind of all over the place, but you know. But it, it, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's uh, nice and. Uh, I like how you have the Christmas tree up still. I do have the Christmas tree. Up still. <laughs> and this is a cool gift my mom got me for Christmas. Um, she took the the New York Times article and uh, got it framed for me. And um, yeah, super sweet of her. But that's pretty much it down here. Um, let's go to the garage. Okay, so right. what is the portfolio value total? Wow, okay, total. Actually, I could do it really quickly. I guess I'd go through all my wallets and we could do some quick maths, quick maths. On my main wallet, um, so I'm not even calculating NFT prices here, by the way. Which would be of... like an extra $5. Who knows? <laughs> no, I was just kidding, <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, okay, it just refreshed. Uh, 1645 thousand dollars. That's life-changing money. Yeah, but that, no, I'm not done. Okay. That's just my main wallet. What would wallet. be your rough estimate of like all the wallets that you hold? I would say roughly an additional 300 grand. Wow, so, so almost 2 million. Almost 2 million, yeah. And that's so, not counting the NFTs because that's extra five, 10 bucks. Yeah, you yeah. Add, don't so you don't, you don't think you'll sell anytime soon? I don't know if you remember this, Andre, but there was some really dark times and I remember in these last two years, you know, uh, I remember very distinctly calling you when Dogecoin was just dropping and dropping and dropping. And at one point it dropped to five cents and it was one penny away from where I got in. I remember that. So I was damn near breaking even point, right? And I called you and I was like, what should I do? Should like, it's scary now, right? Like yeah. now it's scary. Yeah. Like now I might be underwater. Right. And. I, I called you and I asked your opinion and what, what do you think I should do? And I don't know if you remember what you said, but you told me, you were like, look, man, you've, you've, you've like stood your ground this entire time. Yeah. Like you, you've kept your promise, you kept your word, you said you weren't gonna sell a single doge and you didn't. You just have to see it all the way through at this point. Right. And I'm like, you're right. Like right. you're absolutely right, you know? Uh, but I did have those doubts. I had, I had those shaky moments where I was like, I, should I just, get out of this you know like should right. i just sell and you're not worried that we'll get to that point again um man i just i just have so much faith and and so much just like 
with crypto, man. Just, just I really do believe. Like, I'm. It's not a. I'm not putting on a show when I say that stuff. You know, saying that I believe Dogecoin is the future and crypto is the future, and I really feel like this is what's gonna be our new form of banking system, right? Or the the way we we use our money, and it's gonna be all in our hands, not without confrontation by the way the banks aren't going to let that just go that easily we're going to have a lot of issues i'm sure eventually especially with regulation and all that but ultimately this is the future right. so so that i guess that faith and that that that's what i always remember that that's the one thing that i always keep playing in my mind like all right things might be a little hard right now okay maybe people don't get it just yet right but give it some time give it a year give it two give it three like right it will get there eventually. Just just look at how far we've come, right? Like, look at what Bitcoin was 10 years ago. Like, okay, here's the crazy part. Like, just, just try to picture this. We are so privileged to be living in a time where a new form of monetary system has been created 10 years ago. Right. We're not on this earth 50 years from now. We're here now. So if you watch the movie, I had my arcades in a storage place because I didn't have space in that little tiny studio apartment, if you guys remember. But now it's here. Wow. Like, I wish it was like everything was lit up, but this is all of the arcade machines. You're not, you're not gonna ask me my favorite? Which one's your favorite? My favorite is Marvel versus Capcom. Why? I'm, I'm kind of good at it, <laughs> I think. <laughs> but uh, that was like, this was the first one I got. Okay. Actually, at my collection. And um, it's a classic, man. Classic. Are you good at ping pong? Uh, I'm all right. I'm, I'm pretty good. But Andre, <laughs> Andre's a little bit better. I was just watching a video by Dumb Money and Chris Camillo was talking about his entire Bitcoin thesis right now was that it's just, we're seeing a generational shift and a generational wealth transfer. Yes from old people to the younger generation yes. and the older people, their store of value was gold. Yeah. And for our generation, it's Bitcoin. So right. as they inherit the wealth, the thinking is they will move those gold bars, sell them and get rid of them and put them into something they yeah. believe more in, which is for them Bitcoin, which I thought was interesting. And that was his entire thesis. He's like, that alone is enough to right. at least match the market cap of gold, which by today's measure is like a nine to 10 X from today. But right. that's, Bitcoin, right? That's not necessarily Dogecoin, but right. I will agree with the thesis that our propensity to gamble as human beings right. and like wanting to keep up right. and feeling like we've been left behind. It makes sense why the smaller market cap cryptos sort of follow cool. Bitcoin because it's like, oh, I missed that boat, right. but then there's right. all these other ones. Right. So I, I hear you. But on the other side, would you ever consider maybe selling like a couple hundred thousand dollars worth to maybe like put put a down payment on a house or like secure the the basic necessity of your life that way you know you'll never be on the street you'll never right, be right, homeless right, like right, you know right, what i'm saying like the right. basics and you'll still have like over a mil or 1.5 right, right. in your portfolio i i feel like i feel like i'm at a point in my life right now where all of those needs are met without having to do that, which which is what the the end goal always was, right? right. Like like I want to believe in Dogecoin so much, I want to be able to hold this and show people that I really believe this is the future, and you should look into crypto. My whole purpose was just to spark an interest in the crypto space, and and if you watched my story and all you ever got out of it was what is this Dogecoin thing? Let me, and you didn't even have to buy any, but you just like discovered blockchain technology, and you you discovered what this is all about, then that's all that mattered right you know what i mean and so i feel like as long, like you said as long as my needs are met everything is fine my family's taken care of and i don't have to sell the dogecoin then then everything's okay you know uh th i bought this so i could work out <laughs> and I now i just look at it <laughs> <laughs> it's really heavy too <laughs> i guess that's the point right <laughs> and these are my cool secret lab chairs uh, batman the flash and Superman. Are they like limited edition? They are. They're all. They're all three of them. What'd you spend on them? Um, they were like six hundred each or seven hundred dollars. That's each a lot. Yeah. This feels like like a Cribs episode. Like <laughs> it is. Cribs episode. This is an upgrade from our last one. Right. <laughs> By the way, I got cameras everywhere in my house. Ah, this guy's got a camera. Let's go back. Well, I mean, if they don't do that, you know who they are. <laughs> Right. What if they have masks on? Uh, that's true, I guess. I guess. <laughs> What's the I, point? Uh, let's not give anybody any ideas, okay? Yeah. 
<laughs> but uh, it's a laundry room. Uh, lots of uh, detergent. Standard. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty standard stuff, you know. We're not, we're not reinventing the wheel here. Wait, David, can we show them your room? Okay, so this is David's room. Nice. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. He's got like soundproofing and everything. Yep, and this is where he does the music. This is where he does um, the news that he raps right here. That's cool. Um, but yeah, no, it's a nice little space. Love it. All right, so let's where does the real on. magic happen? <laughs> In the guest room. <laughs> <laughs> so this is no, this is a mess, but this is a guest room that I have. Whenever my sister comes to visit, my mom comes to visit, a family member wants to come to Vegas, or I have some friends over. Usually just stay here, you know? Yep. Pretty cool. And I think next year is actually gonna be the biggest part of the bull run. So if you ever feel like they're, we're at the peak of the, of the bull market, would you consider selling then? Yeah. Or would you go through another cycle? Well, this is the thing. So <laughs> if you're asking me if I'd ever hold the whole bag again, no, I would not. <laughs> okay. Um, I would, obviously nobody can predict the top, top of, of the bull market, but when we're in a bull market, we're in a bull market. And I feel like we can all, like that you for, like you told me that. That's something else you told me, advice you gave me that you probably don't remember. You said, you will know when you're at the peak or around the peak, when there's such a level of euphoria that you can't escape it. Yes. Because you said you felt that early on with Bitcoin. I did, yeah. On one of the cycles. Yes. Yeah, that's what I told myself. I said, if I feel like I have money in it, and if I feel like I need to put even more in and sell everything, just that's when I feel like emotionally when it gets to right. me, that's probably somewhere near the top. No, I, I, when I feel I, fear I of missing out and mm -hmm. I'm already in it. Mm -hmm. No, I, I get that. I, w I was thinking I might even have a whole strategy to be honest. Um, so what I think will happen is Bitcoin will at least 2X. Okay. In my mind. Okay. So it'll go to like 140, 140, 140 okay. right? Okay. Once it gets there, can it get to 200? Yes. But it's already double what it was before. Right. When it gets to that level, start laddering out. Okay. Right? So if I had a bunch of Bitcoin, I would be like, okay, every week I sell $10,000 worth or $20,000 worth, right? Because then for me to sell out of everything will take six months. Okay. Now, what are the odds that Bitcoin is on a bull run for six months straight? up, 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 up. Probably right? very little. Very little, but if it is, then you probably caught it at the very peak and then it goes down, right? right. By, the time you, by, by the time you ladder out. Or plan it for eight months. Or like, like set an amount of time that you think, okay, it's reached what I feel like is the peak. Even if it's not exactly the peak, I might be a month off. I might be two, three months off. I might be four months off. Worst case scenario, I'm six months off, right? Because it goes to 250,000, whatever the case may be. But then you still have enough to, to ladder out to the point where like on the way back down, it's like, all right, cool. So you you're know? saying this time you'll dollar cost average out of it once you feel like it's a peak. Right. So, do okay, I'll put it this way. Once Dogecoin hits a dollar, I'll sell. I feel like everybody Whether, whether I that. sell it all, I'm not <laughs> promising nobody anything this time around, okay? Once it hits a dollar, I could sell the whole bag of $5 million worth of Dogecoin and that'll be okay with me because I cause I'd said I would do what I said I would do and, and I feel like I've earned my stripes at this point okay. and nobody can say anything. So it's more me. about a principle thing rather than anything else. Yeah, Yeah. ultimately. Are you guys ready for this? I don't think I'm ready. Are you ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's cool. Whoa. All right. Look, I have this right here, which I really like a lot. What is this? So it's an NFT project that I did with a few friends of mine. So shout out to Parole, by the way. Uh, we never released it. It's ready to go. We're waiting for the pull market. So, I mean, I think we're on the verge of that right now, actually. But I really like that. Got my Dogecoin stuff up there. Nice. Just old school stuff. And then I love, this is probably my favorite part of the room. So I have all my books. So if you guys remember, uh, my studio apartment in LA had these books all the way up to the ceiling because they couldn't fit in such a small area. I had to just build high. But uh, these are all the books that, wow. that I have there. So the entire library just fits right here. Right here. But you remember how high up it was? Yeah. In the studio where you had to like, it went all the way to the ceiling, to the roof. And what are these? Uh, those are my favorite Air Maxes. They're scorpions. Dude, I don't know anything about shoes, and these but... these are every colorway that they made them in. Wait, what are they called? Uh, Air Max Scorpions. Okay. Yeah, so I like that. Let's check out the bathroom. Oh, this is cool. I want to show you this. 
How cool is that? What is this? It's a playing card, but it's an E. Okay. Can you see it? Is it yep, yep. And then show me the other one. This one's cool too. You're like, this this seventh cycle, I promise. <laughs> this will be the one. Thirteen cycles of charm, guys. I swear. It cannot pump again. <laughs> like it. Right. <laughs> right. No, it's true. I have a different theory. I what feel is it? my theory is that you're a perpetual risk taker because in reality you don't have much. In theory, right. you have a lot. But I think it's easier to be in the gambler mindset when you only have what you have on paper. Right. But when it's realized and it's held in like maybe hard assets or whatever, mm -hmm. things you can see and things you can feel you become less inclined to gamble because you're like, I don't want to lose what I already live. But right now, what you're living through is digits on a computer screen. Right. And you're seeing it go up and down. Mm -hmm. and you're desensitized at this point. Right. So you're like, what difference does it make? Right. My life is what it is. Right. I'm going to continue doubling down, doubling down, doubling down until I feel like I can extract it mm -hmm. and make it real. And so right. it'll perpetually not be real until it is. Right. And right. in the meantime, I think you'll be com continually taking these Bro, risks. but I'm, I'm, I'm going to call you when Dogecoin hits a dollar and I sell and I'm I not make saying 10, it won't. five million. <laughs> I'm not saying it won't. I'm just... I'm just trying to be sensible. I get and, it. Uh, well, there you have it. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments about this video, his strategy, everything that's going on, the crypto markets. And in the meantime, if you want to see the rest of that interview, go ahead and check out Don't Sweat It, which is a podcast I started a while ago because making videos in your basement never leads to getting new friends. Who would have thunk it? So I started the podcast as a way to meet people that come through Vegas. So let me know how you like it. But in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks. Links are down below and then go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to see you back here on Monday and Friday, sometimes a Wednesday. See you soon. Bye-bye.